Time Runners. The Senate built in Rome, 44 BC. Rome didn't have a king. Instead, Roman citizens built the two councils of leaders called the Assembly and the Senate. It, their, it was their job to discuss important issues and make laws. Chapter 1 Chip couldn't sleep. Living in a time vault was exciting enough. But now they started training to fight the violence. There was so much to learn as well. With a sigh, he sat up and flicked the switch. The light in his sleeping pot glowed. He picked up his training manual and began to read. As he read, Chip held the com common communication link in his hand. He couldn't wait to use it for real. He couldn't wait to become a time runner. Chapter 2 The day's tra training began in the laboratory. You took half a sleep, said Nina as Chip shuffled in late. At least he's got up, said Wolf, closing his locker. Tyler must still be in bed. At that moment, the door burst open. It was Mortlock. Behind him, something zoomed into the room. Tyler! Everyone gasped. And his new techno chair, announced Mortlock. Tyler turned suddenly and then skipped to the top. Do you like it? He grinned. Mortlock built it. Now I'll be able to do anything you lot can. And a lot more. Smiled the Mortlock. Impressive, said Nadine. Everyone gathered around Tyler. Chip looked at the control panels on the chair. What does this button do? He asked, pushing, pushing one of the buttons. No! yelled Tyler, but it was too late. Tyler shot backwards and slammed into the lockers. Immediately, the chair lurched forward. Whoa! giggled Tyler. Top! They all laughed at the sight of Tyler zipping wildly across the laboratory. But suddenly the laughing stopped. Tyler was heading straight for the vat where the catcher virons were held. They held their breaths as he plugged to the, the side of the vat with a loud crash. The glass vat shuddered. The big matter stirred. Parting and hissed angrily inside the glass chamber. Everyone rushed to help Tyler. Even behind the glass, those virons are scary. Tyler said in a shaky voice. The vat slowly settled with a quiet hiss. Morla quietly checked it. It seems alright, he said. No harm done. But we must be careful near the bat. Chapter 3 The training carried on all day. There was a lot to learn about the link. As he listened, Nadine flicked up the secret lid and studied the tiny screen and keyboard. But Tyler couldn't concentrate. He tried to listen more to Mortlock, but something was bothering him. He kept thinking about the virons and how friendly they were. Finally, Mortlock said, So remember, with the link you will be able to talk to the time vault when you are on the mission. The link also sends receives test downloads. He looked around the room. Any questions? Tyler put up his hand. I am worried. We can use the link to protect ourselves against violence. Can we? He asked. We've been lucky so far. But we won't always be. The others got greed. Yeah, said Nadine. I mean, how are we supposed to trap them and bring them back? Morlock nodded thoughtfully. It's time to show you, he said. Let's go. No one noticed. But all this time, the virulent vet had continued to hiss quietly. Something was not right. Everyone followed Morlock. 
into the library. At the far end, he stopped and pulled a large book away from the shelf. Immediately, the whole bookcase shuddered, and then slid inwards like giant doors. Beyond the bookcase was a dark space. Morlock stepped into the darkness. Lights blinked onto a reveal a large room. The bookcase doors closed behind him. This is the control center, said Morlock. In the center of the space, on a desk was a time whip. Its mass of glowing thread shimmered quite gently. In front of it was the matrix, and beside was a globe that glowed with a faint light. Morlock pointed to the open tubes that dropped into the space. They were chutes. He explained that they were connected to the sleeping pods. With these, you can get here in seconds, smiled Morlock. So that's what the chutes are, grinned Bulma. Cool! Next, Morlock slid open a drawer and the, in the desk. He took out a silver ball and held it up. This is a zap trap, he said. They are used to catch virens. Warlock began to explain how they worked, but Chip's mind wondered. It has been a long day, sleep. The thought of it made him yawn. Warlock stopped talking. He smiled at Chip. Perhaps we should all get some rest. It's been a long day. Warlock began to hand out zap traps. Tomorrow I'll show you how they work. For now, take them with you and get used to it then. Look at the section uh, on zap traps in your manuals. Meanwhile, back in the laboratory, the virus bat be continued to hiss. Chapter 5 Even though Chip was tired, he still couldn't sleep. So he lay in bed reading. Eventually, he fell asleep, asleep till holding the manual. A voice jolted Chip from his deep sleep. Chip took control immediately. It barked. It came from the speaker in his pod. It, he had overslept. He was late for training again. Chip scrambled to the chute. He hadn't used it before. Here goes, he thought, and he launched himself down at it. He landed with a loud thud in control. So glad you joined us, laughed Morlock. But something was wrong. Chip was in pain. He had to twist his ankle. You better rest it, said Biff. All right, Chip, I'll give you a lift back on your pod said Tyler. Hop on! Chip climbed to the techno chair had Tyler spun it around. But as they hand headed down to the library, there was a grinding sound. Smoke bellowed from under the chair and stopped suddenly. Oh no! said Tyler. Morlock studied the techno chair's motor. It made time to fix, he thought. I'm sorry, said Tyler. You must have been damaged when I crashed into the vat. Don't worry, smiled Morlock. I'll push Chip back to his pod. Then I'll take the chair to my workshop and try to fix it. The rest of you stay here. Use the time to study time with. He pushed Chip out into the library. Then the bookcase doors closed behind them. Chapter 6 They looked at the time web in silence. It's like a map, Wilma suddenly said. A giant map of history. Every point of light is a moment from the past. Every moment affects the next right up to the present, added Nina. The time was teared. The point of light suddenly turned back black, sending a pulse of darkness towards the edge of the web. They watched in horror. Is it a barren attack? asked Kipper. 
Now what? Now what do we do? Toddler tried to call Mortlock and his link, but there was no answer. We had to do something, said Biff. Toddler peered into the glow next to the matrix. Ancient room, 44 BC. The virus must be attacking, he gasped. You have to go now. I'll stay on control. They've tapped into a portal and a few had spinning seconds they had arrived. Within a moment, Toddler had contracted contact on them on the link. What can you see? Wilma whippered into her link. Early morning, a quiet street, tall buildings like blocks of flats. A large marble building with tall columns covering scaffolding. Looks like it's bringing a revolt, added Biff. Tyler had done some research in the library. It's the Senate building. He said, in 44 BC, the Senate was closed for repairs. What's the Senate? Said, asked Kipper. It's where the Roman government, the senators, met, said Tyler. He quickly looked in the book. Oh no, what is it? Asked Nina. 44 BC, when the leader Julius Caesar was assassinated, assassinated by some of the senators. At that moment, a man turned into the street and walked quickly towards the Senate. Wait, whispered Nadine. He looks important. He's wearing um uh um he hesitated. A toga in trouble wolf. We did this at school. He could be Julius Caesar, gasped Kipper. Possibly, said Tyler, but it is, it is more than likely that he might be a senator. Suddenly, from the shadows, a man lay forward and dashed after the senator. He He's going to attack him, I guess, Biff. Supposing he's a virus? What if that man is Julius Caesar? I'll use my zap trap. Wait, said Tyler. You have to be sure it is a virus. You must wait. You must not get involved otherwise. Just wait. Chapter Seven. Chip woke with a start. Over the pod speaker, he could hear Floppy barking. He hobbled down the slope to level one. It sounded as if Floppy was in the library. Why hadn't the others heard him? As he pulled open the library door, his blood froze. He saw a swirling mass of darkness. He was ripping the library into pieces. It could only be a Byron. It must have escaped from the vat in the laboratory. Meanwhile, back in the ancient room, we must top him, said Nina, before it's too late. A rough man caught up with the senator. He grabbed and hauled him. He has to be a Byron, cried Biff. She held up her zap trap. Tyler, answer me. I'm going to launch it. But we have to be sure, gasped Wolf. Biff held her breath. I've got one chance, she thought. At the same time, in the time vault, as fast as he could, Chip went back up to his pod. He had to think quickly. He spoke into his link. Is anyone there? Tyler answered. Chip, I'm in control. We have an emergency and... Chip interrupted him. There's a virus in the library. It must be trying to get into control. Are you all safe? Can the virus get to you? Tyler was scared. He unlocked the bookcase doors, but on the other side he could hear crashing sounds. If the barn got in, they were finished. The barn would destroy the time web. From the library came a loud thud. The bookcase door shook. Tyler spoke to Chip urgently. I can't move quickly without my chair. The others are out in the time web. 
I don't know where a Murloc is. Hold them back, yelled Chip. Now! Back in ancient Rome. Just as Bib was about to draw a jet trap, the rough man pulled the senator backwards. From the roof of the senate, a huge block of stone crashed to the street where the senator had been. The second earlier, the man had saved the senator's life. Biff and the others had got wrong. Nadine looked up at the roof. A shadowy figure stared back. Viren! Nadine shouted. Biff drew her draft trap. Everyone Link buzzed. It was Tyler. Emergency! Get back, now! He said. Chapter 8 Chip could hear the crashing below his pot. It was getting louder and more frantic. He had been able to contact Morlock either. Suddenly, Tyler's voice burst from Chip's link. I called them back, but maybe it's too late. I think the virus about to break through. Oh no, it's in silence. Chip clapped his back to that trap. I've got one chance, he thought, and he drew himself down the chute. He hit the ground hard. His bad leg buckled under him. Out of the corner of his eye, he glimpsed the Byron. He launched his trap, that trap as he fell. As it flew, it opened up and released a ball to plasma. Instantly, the Byron froze. It was sucked into a trap which snapped shut. Your history, Chip screamed. Chip and faint with pain. He came around and saw everyone looking down at him. Morlock had held Chip's that trap, which had trapped the Byron. He smiled gently. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you, he said, but they had to deal with the bat. It must have been damaged by Tyler's chair. There were other Byrons trying to escape from him. Murlog took Biff's jab, jab trap, but you dealt with it. Well done. You've just proved you're ready to be Time Runner.